In this video, I'm going to be showing how to use the Blue Sky Bio DS3D scanner to uh, capture some model scans with the models being mounted on an articulator. Now, one of the common annoyances with some of the uh, lower cost scanners on the market is that they're really small in what they'll capture, and it's very difficult then to be able to uh, articulate models. Uh, any way other than just rubber banding them together and sticking them in there. That is an option with this one, but you can also use the option of sticking your entire articulator in. So with this, what I'm going to do is start a new case and we'll call these articulated casts for our patient name. Uh, this is going to be a model scan, so select models. And with this scanner, it doesn't really care what order you go in on acquiring your data. With some scanners, you have to really uh, specifically define a task, and it's going to lead you through that task. And if you get midway through and then find that, oh, I, I told it I was scanning dies and I just meant to do models, you're going to actually have to delete everything back up and start over. With this, you just grab things as you go. It doesn't really matter. So I can grab the alignment data first. And when you choose alignment, this was, is what will come up. We could do rubber banded casts, we could do a bite registration, or we can do an articulator scan. We'll choose articulator scan, and it's telling us to uh, rotate this scan table out of the way and then stick the articulator in. So I'll do that. I'm just rotating the scan plate up and out of the way and placing my entire articulator into the scanner. And what I would like to do is get my field of view such that the models are right in the middle. You see the green dot on uh, the right hand side of the screen here. I want that to be ideally right at the level of the occlusal table with my models in the center of the screen. With that done now I can click next and the software is going to shoot one single picture. Uh, it doesn't have to rotate it around or anything. It's just capturing one picture, which it's going to use to stitch the upper and the lower. Um, so a very quick process. It's already completed. And now I can remove the articulator from the scanner. And as the software is processing, I can go ahead and begin loading the scan plate with my individual models. So really press these in very tightly to the blue tack material and then orient this with the uh, blue and yellow dot facing away from the camera, okay? The magnetic plate will snap into place, and this looks great. That's all that we need for a buckle bite, and now I'll click Finish, and we have our alignment data now. At this point, um, we can begin scanning the upper, because that's what I've put in, so I'll tell it now that I'm going to do the upper model, and the software, once again, is going to tell me to put the model in. Uh, you want to orient this, once again, where your model is right in the center. If you need to use any of the various height adapters to raise it up or down, go ahead and do so. But do try to get your models where um, the uh, green uh, crosshairs are right on the center of your model. With that done, click Next. And the software is going to start taking more pictures. Uh, to scan the model. Now models don't generally require powder or anything. They pretty much scan ideally and so it's not usually necessary to capture a lot of data after the fact. But I'll speed this up in time lapse. I will have a clock running so that you can see the real time of the scan and then we'll scan the lower as well. With the upper scan complete, you now have the opportunity to look your model over and see if there are any holes. Now, obviously, it's not picked up a lot of the data down here, and that's okay. I don't really need any of that data. Uh, if I wanted to fill in, say, some holes like this, I could rotate the scanner such that I'm looking into the areas where that missed data is and click Add View. The software will then rotate that scan plate to that position and it will shoot another uh, picture and it will stitch in that additional data to capture more information. So watch this area as it scans and adds that new data in. As you see, that has now filled in a lot of that additional data. Um, now I do know just 
because I've, I've done these casts before. This particular area is because of a very big defect in my actual model. Uh, there's a big bubble right in that area and the light simply can't get in there. So that's why I'm not adding uh, data on that particular region. Everything else is looking really nice. And so I'm gonna click finish. With that done, I can remove the upper magnetic plate and I will now put the lower one on. We'll replace the plate here. And I'm going to let the upper finish post processing. Lower. Once again, orient where the green crosshairs is in the center of your model and just click next and it will begin scanning. Now that the lower model is complete, we can once again look that over, find out if there's any uh, areas of missing data. Again, I don't really care too much about what's going on down in this region. This to me looks perfectly sufficient for my needs, so I'll click finish. But if you needed to, you could have hit add view to add more data. And now that all the models have been constructed, you can see ready down here in the bottom left corner. At this point, you're ready to go ahead and align them. Remember, you took your alignment scan first. You could have just as easily done that last. I'll click align now. And this is an automatic alignment feature. It's going to simply take that buckle bite, stitch the upper and the lower to that. And all you need to do is look and verify that they are in the right position. In uh, this case, it appears that they obviously are. Click finish. And with that done, I would only crop uh, as your last step. If you crop away too much information before the alignment process, you're reducing the amount of data that it has to stitch to your buckle by. So now I can crop. Now we can look at the model and orient it. And the lower model is chosen. What I'm gonna do is use the rectangle tool. I will outline the part that I want to keep. That's important that you uh, outline the part that you want to keep and then click crop. It will get rid of all the other data. Now I can switch the uh, menu to the upper. And with the upper done, I will, this time I'll use the lasso tool just to show it. Circle the part that you want to keep and then crop. With that completed, now we've finished everything that we need to do with this. Everything is aligned, and now you could export it to the place of your choice. Uh, just click Export Files, and then you would be ready to now open these files in the program of your choice. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm just showing this in, the, uh, in Mesh Mixer just to view the STLs. As you can see, these are nicely aligned via that buckle bite. You see the tight stitch between them. If I was to hide that, you can see each of your individual models now. And if you wanted to really look the mesh over, you can see that everything is really nicely defined. Uh, we captured all the data that was necessary. And at this point, you could do whatever you need to do in other programs.